that he has held some type of power in Cuba. He passes away over the weekend. Ambassador Roger Noriega, a visiting fellow with the American Enterprise Institute from Washington, D.C., thank you very much. A historic event happened these last few days. Certainly did. Uh, we discovered that the Castros are mortal. Uh, he died at 90. His little brother has held power since 2008. Uh, he's uh, maybe 86, 87. Uh, and uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. We've seen very little new, a new economic and political opening since he took power. And, and as a matter of fact, they're planning a dynastic transition to his family. So uh, something's going to have to change uh, for Cubans to claim their political and economic future. What happens now? We've seen some loosening up, some loosening of the reins of the U.S. embargo. Um, do, do you see a time where in this short time from now that things might be opening up? Well, uh, President Obama uh, a year ago uh, started with a series of unilateral concessions to the regime uh, with some expectation on his part that uh, they would uh, reciprocate with uh, by extending new economic and political opportunity to their people. Unfortunately, just the opposite's happened. You see the crackdown on dissidents, less space for human rights activists, uh, very little support from the U.S. new U.S. embassy there in Havana for those people who are uh, who think differently than the regime, and we've seen a policy that's in, in really really reinforced the status quo, uh, sweetheart deals that that actually are managed by uh, Castro's uh, son-in-law uh, that tend to uh, suggest that the U.S. is okay with passing power within this within the Castro dynasty. Uh, elect Trump uh, he said he's going to roll back those uh, uh, that opening, roll back some of those new regulations. Uh, hopefully, he'll find a way to be more creative in engaging 11 million Cubans rather re rather than reinforce. There, there, Cuba is 90 miles off the coast of Florida. Um, cell phones and technology being what it is, I can't believe that we can't come to some agreement moving forward to sort of open them up and yet still keep whatever it is they, they want. Sort of, I mean, it seems to me like this is just a failed policy all the way around. Well, certainly it hasn't produced the results that people expect because, and I don't think that they understand that you have a Stalinist regime there, a totalitarian regime. I had Eastern European uh, diplomats uh, describe it like that to me, people that lived on the island as diplomats who knew uh, uh, the way um, the totalitarian regimes uh, operate, and they, they, that's you know kept 11 million people uh, in, in bondage at, at the mercy of that at that government and uh, their their ability to be educated, their ability to work uh, is controlled absolutely by the government. And yeah, and they also, for that matter, in this modern uh, era, access to the internet is absolutely controlled. The way the North Koreans and and uh, and uh, even worse than on on in, in China. So. Uh, there, as long as that regime is reinforced, as, as long as they um, aren't challenged, uh, uh, there isn't going to be significant change on the island. Ambassador Roger Noriega, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Visiting fellow with the American Enterprise Institute from Washington, D.C. on the passing of Fidel Castro. Stay right there. Thomas Friedman talks about his new book. That's in seven minutes.